Hey everybody, God bless you. Thanks for coming to my channel. If you got a letter, like I give out this letter, it's an orange writing. Um, I've been giving out, I guess, I guess I've been giving it out for about two years now. The Holy Spirit had me write it. Uh, yesterday I did a video and I showed you the letter. Uh, if anybody wants the letter uh, or wants to make copies of the letter, please please uh, contact me. I'd be happy to mail you the letter or to email you the letter so that you can use it in your own um, witnessing. Um, but I want to show this video because um, I learned how to share the gospel from Ray Comfort back in 2007. And we are doing this. We share the gospel because first we love Jesus because he transformed our lives. But then also we want others to be saved before I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And the signs are that it could be any day, you know, the signs of them talking about aliens. My goodness, you know, they talk about aliens all the time. When I first started writing Left Behind Letters in 2017, I talked about the aliens and that that, that would be used as the uh, excuse for why people had disappeared. But the reason why I wanted to show this video, this is um, on Ray Comfort's Just Witnessing channel. And he used Acts 3.19. You know, we uh, yesterday I talked about Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized for the remission, remission of sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And praise the Lord, I had a comment that um, Rebecca King was coming to reconciliation with her husband after, I forgot how many years it is. Please go watch that video. But, um, and then her, I think it's her son, had gotten, a 10-year-old had just gotten baptized a couple of weeks ago. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I wanted to show this because he's using another great verse, Acts 3.19. And this is a website I use called BibleGateway.com. If you're new to studying the Bible, repent, therefore, and be converted so that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And there are so many people who believe that you can just keep on sinning and that you're still, you know, God forgives you. For your past, present, and future sins is what they say. But this verse says, repent therefore and be converted. Move from being a sinner into a child of God. That your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. The Lord comes upon you in his presence when you have uh, repented and been converted. Which fits with Acts 238 and also I'm going to show uh, Hebrews 412 for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so when you are converted you get a new heart he takes out your stony stubborn heart and puts in a new tender, responsive heart that wants to obey his commandments. You know, the commandments are good. It's the law of liberty that sets us free. So anyway, I wanted to show this so that um, you can see how the gospel, how the gospel, when it's really presented correctly, gives, it goes to the person's heart. It goes to the thoughts and intents of their heart and starts to, do what it's supposed to do to be sharper than a two-edged sword. Oh, and before I show the video, get this. So he. So let's watch the video. You think this life after death? No. And when an animal dies, like a hamster, it dies. Like it, you don't see its spirit go nowhere. Think about it much? No, sir. You know why you don't think about it? It's a horrible thought. Dying. We want to keep ourselves busy and things that'll make us feel happy. 
but thinking about being buried six feet under the ground, leaving your loved ones, going somewhere you don't know where you're going to go to, that's frightening, don't you think? Very frightening, very. Uh, What's the difference between you and a hamster besides the size? Uh, being consciously aware of your mind. You're a human being. You're not a dog or a horse or a cat or a cow. That doesn't separate us from any other living animal. I mean, do you believe in evolution? Yeah. So you think you're a primate? Yeah. The alien race came down to uh, back when we were uncivilized like beasts. They edited our, our DNA so that they can use us as slaves to mine for gold and to build uh, civilizations. Do you believe in God? No. Do you drive on the freeways? Yes. Do you trust your rear vision mirrors? Do you totally trust or do you look over your shoulder as well? I look over my shoulder sometimes. Uh, you got to because those mirrors aren't trustworthy. Things look smaller than what they are and not only that, you're looking at them in reverse. You're not even seeing them as they are, so it's good to look over your shoulder. Do you know the Bible gives us a mirror that we can look into that is accurate? It's in the book of James. It speaks of the perfect law of liberty and it says when we look into it, we should see ourselves in truth. It's speaking of the Ten Commandments. So you believe nothing created everything? I believe something created everything, but it's going to happen in, in like 10 billion years, we're going to have another Big Bang. Because there's the, there are our Milky Way galaxy, and then there's the Andromeda galaxy. The pictures you see of the Milky Way, it's not actually the Milky Way, it's, it's the Andromeda. The gravitational pull of our two universes, or like, like galaxies, are going towards each other. Like everything is going to change, and once those galaxies, or, or those, uh, galaxies collide, everything's just going to get blacked up and it's going to create another Big Bang and everything's going to get spread out again and another Earth will be created. No one would believe that your t-shirt fell together by itself because it's got design. And everywhere you look, there's design from the atom to the universe, to the flowers and birds and trees, the sun, the moon, the stars, the marvels of the human eye, the miracle of childbirth. All these things show us the genius of God's creative hand. But the Bible says we are in a state of hostility towards God because of his moral requirements. That means we don't like God telling us what to do morally. Let me ask you a question. When did you last look at pornography? Probably two months ago. So how many lies have you told in your life? Too many to count. You ever stolen something? Oh, yeah. Okay, what do you call somebody who steals? A thief. So what are you? A thief. No, you're not. You're a lying thief. Do you still think you're a good person? Yes. The Bible was written by like 10,000 people. Like the word of God or the word of Jesus Christ and all that. Like. It was, it, was, it was taken by like 10,000 other people. They had, all had to write that book. Like how many, how many times can that get edited out? Like, like playing that telephone game, like you, you mentioned a word to one person and he says it to the next word. And like how many times does that edit change what was originally said? Do you know how to stop that happening with the telephone game? The guy that gives the first message follows the message as it's passed from one to another to make sure it doesn't change. Yeah. And the Bible says God followed his word down through history. It hasn't changed. I've been reading the Bible every day without fail for more than 50 years. But back to what we're talking about. We're in a state of hostility towards God, and we use his name as a cuss word, which evidences the truth of that hostility. And you've taken his holy name and used it as a cuss word. That's called blasphemy. So serious in the Old Testament, it was punishable by death. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? A lot. I still do today. You can't help it, can you? Can't help it. Yeah, Jesus said, he that serves sin is a slave of sin. The Bible says our eyes are full of adultery. Have you had sex before marriage? Yes. You still think you're a good person? Yes. Okay, here's a summation. Hold on. <laughs> You've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, self-righteous, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. If He judges you by those Ten Commandments, you've got to be innocent or guilty. I'll be guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Have you ever heard the Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? No. Yeah, it's saying that God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a heinous criminal that's committed multiple murders, and he thinks lightly of it. He says, Judge, there's no such thing as right and wrong. These ladies were prostitutes. I was doing society a favor, and the judge says, I'm going to show you how serious this is. I'm giving you the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. Joseph, sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. You're on death row. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. I mean, I've just met you, but I love you. I don't want you to go to hell. You don't want to go there? What did God do so we wouldn't have to go to hell? So uh, he sacrificed his only son. Yeah, most people know that, but they don't know this. And Joseph, if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. 
That's why he said it is finished just before he died. He is saying paid in full. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines and somebody else pays them, a judge will let you go if someone pays those fines. He'll say you're out of here, someone paid your fine. And he does that which is legal. Well, God can legally take the death sentence off you because Jesus paid the fine in full on that cross. Rose from the dead and defeated death and all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins and trust in Jesus. Don't trust your goodness. Trust the God-given Savior, and you've got a promise from the God who cannot lie. He'll forgive your sins and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. I want you to please think about what we talked about. It doesn't hurt your will. Yeah, of course. Can yeah. I give you a book that I've written? Sure. It's called Scientific Facts in the Bible. Yeah. And it'll, it'll give you knowledge to show the Bible is, is credible. It's got facts, scientific facts that were written in it thousands of years before man discovered them. So. I really appreciate you taking the book, and I hope you'll take the time to read it. Oh, I'll read it. Oh, I'll for sure read it. I, I read a lot. Okay, great to talk to you, man. Thanks for stopping. Yeah, no problem. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So when are you going to repent and put your faith in right Jesus? Now. Right now? Right now. Can I pray with you? Yes, sir. Father, I pray for Joe. Thank you for his honesty of heart. I pray today he'll see the serious nature of his sins and truly repent in genuine sorrow for sin flee to Jesus Christ and have his sins washed away all because of your amazing grace. May this day be born again and pass from death to life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do you have a Bible at home? Yes, sir. Can I give you a book I've written? Yes, sir. That's great. Yeah. So you think he sounded sincere? Yeah, I think he did. He sounded sincere like he was actually repenting. Uh, so he acknowledged he heard the gospel for what it was. And he, he had a reaction to that. Well, his friends were listening over the back? Yes, I was glad they didn't interrupt because it looks like they were in a hurry to get somewhere else. So I'm glad you were able to finish that. That was great. Thank you for getting him. He just said thanks so much for stopping me. People often say I'd love you to talk to my unbelieving friend or family member. But why not send them this video? Just click on the share button and say, I'd love to know what you think of this. There's nothing offensive about that. Send it and then pray. Do it today. Real quick, here are three things to help you. So I hope you enjoyed that. And really, you know, it does, <laughs> it really is something that we should be thinking about. Really, really thinking about. And, you know, the thing is, a lot of times I'm sharing to young people, I'm sharing the gospel to young people, and they haven't had anybody else share the gospel. They haven't. It's... You're, you're not going to hear the gospel if you go to a church most of the time. You're not going to hear a gospel, hear the gospel. And um, nobody's going to tell you, oh, you know, the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. But you have to call on him. You have to ask in Jesus' name to be saved. And I really thought that Joe seemed like he truly, truly wanted to get saved today. So I hope that is what happened. I appreciate you listening. And... You know, every day is a possible day to either die and, and you know, you're pointed to die once and then face the judgment. So you need to have an urgency about getting it right, getting your life right with the Lord today. And if you're not, call on his name. Ask him to speak to you. Get a physical Bible. Get a physical Bible because there are, um, we don't know what's going to happen with the electricity an EMP, all of these things that they're talking about, a WAR, we don't know. Have a physical Bible and then read it every day. He said he's been reading it every day for 50 years. <laughs> wow. I've been reading it every day for 18 years. It is the most wonderful thing. When he is talking to you as you're reading the Bible, you're just like in love with God. It's so amazing. And he, his word is true. So thanks for watching and God bless y'all and Maranatha.